Hello, everyone, and thank you for the opportunity to, to talk about the work of the Parliament team at the Helsinki Hackathon. Um, our team uh, included um, four participants after some attrition, so uh, we'll, uh, I'll be talking about the team effort. Uh, Isabella, Courtney, Richard, uh, myself, Christina, and Ruben. And uh, Aida was, was the team leader. Uh, Mate helped with facilitating this work, and we also had uh, great help from Dalia during the hackathon, who explained to us the structure of the data, how to use CQL, and how to not get lost in all this. And most of the participants had very little to no experience with uh, working with such data. So we were uh, extremely lucky and, and grateful for the excellent help and guidance uh, during the hackathon. Uh, the work uh, the work took um, during the hackathon took one and a half uh, weeks, and the results are described in the blog post um, that is linked to on this slide. I'll be I'll be talking about part of the results because there was uh, quite a lot of this, but I welcome you to to read the whole post. Um, so the main question that that our work addressed was how um, the COVID nineteen pandemic was ref reflected in parliamentary speeches. Um, in a cross-national perspective, taking, um, taking advantage of the comparative character of the parliament data set uh, and also over time. And to break down this question, uh, we looked at how speeches um, during COVID times differed from speeches from regular debates and regular means before COVID, um, which topics arose and which were similar across countries, how the, um, how the various uh, issues the um, debates of the various issues changed over time and how the intensity of the COVID related debates uh, changed over time and how it related to the developments of the actual pandemic in terms of uh, infections. Uh, we used uh, the parliament uh, data version 2.0 and of the, of, of the many corpora we selected four from Italy, Poland, Slovenia and UK that matched the native languages or languages that the participants um, of the of the parliament team knew very well, and the the work was organized such that one or two people were working with their parliamentary corpus in their language. Um, so we used so we were working in the original languages of the corpora. Although Ida also provided us with machine translated versions, um, we we worked with the original languages, and then we were discussing our experiences and coming up with procedures that could be standardized and uniformly applied across the corpora. Then we applied these procedures and we were discussing the results and to, to understand what were the similarities, what were the differences and whether all of this made sense. Um, one person uh, of our team, Ruben, at, uh, at that time, uh, he was not working with, uh, with a separate parliamentary corpus, but he was applying some more sophisticated and computationally intensive procedures to all the corpora. So part of the results is um, it comes also from that. Um, the, as was mentioned earlier, the COVID subcorpus was identified by dates. So it started in November 2019 and onwards. The reference subcorpus was, was everything before that. And to standardize the data that we were working with a little bit, we chose, um, we chose subsets that ex excluded chairpersons and invited guests. Um, the, the table shows basic information about the corpora and just very briefly, the, the size was more or less the same for, four, for three countries. And then the UK subcorpus, uh, the UK corpus, which was much, much bigger. Um, the corpora also differed with regard to the time span, including the starting date, but also the end date, which I guess reflects the time where the national team um, joined the, the, the parliament project. Um, and in addition, in addition to the parliament data, we also use data from COVID infections from the Johns Hopkins University's um, repository. In terms of tools, we primarily used NoSketch Engine, which was great because, because, like I said, the participants didn't have much experience with such data. The data are huge, so they're hard to handle like on the personal laptop, although we tried that as well. Um, and um, from NoSketch Engine, we we used we we use that to, just for basic exploration to create descriptive um, uh, speech statistics uh, by country and by political party um, 
also using the metadata that were available in the parliament data sets. We created, um, we defined searches uh, to and created subcorpora. Um, and we use also the keywords functionality and the, uh, and, uh, the, the option to, to identify collocations. So that was most of our work. We um, used a little bit also Orange, which is a data mining, um, data mining program that allows users to use, to combine widgets into a very nice workflow. So that's graphically very appealing. We used that a little bit, and some of the analysis were also done in Python on the original data files downloaded from the repository, and in R on excerpts from um, downloaded from um, No Sketch Engine. So the first thing we did was to try to see what keywords distinguish the COVID subcorpora, the subcorpora and the different countries from the reference subcorpora. And here um, you can see results for the four countries. Um, each country has its own column and the keywords are translated to English by ourselves. So these may not be perfect translations and they're ranked according to the keyness score, which is more or less the ratio of the normalized frequencies of, of the word in the focus subcorpus uh, divided by um, the normalized frequency in the reference subcorpus. The, what the, the colors mean, the intensity of the color indicates the number of countries in which we found the, the given keywords. So the darkest green is, for example, with pandemic and COVID, these were keywords, or coronavirus, these, these were key, keywords that we found in all uh, countries. And then lighter, like mask, uh, we found in three countries. And the lighter yet, like quarantine, I think, were in two countries. The ones that are uh, that uh, are in white were only found in a single country, and the ones that are bolded were found in a single country, but they refer somehow are connected somehow to the uh, pandemic. So what we took from this is that the, the 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 keywords that the words that were related to the COVID pandemic indeed were distinguishing the major distinguishing keywords of the COVID period compared to the earlier period, and that across the countries. Many, many of the words were actually the same. Uh, so pandemic, COVID and coronavirus in, in, the, lo in the local languages were used, um, could, use be, it could, could be used as kind of comparable keywords um, across these countries. The second thing we did was to examine collocations of some of the pandemic related keywords. And we did it in se several ways. Uh, what I'm showing now are uh, collocation networks. I won't be getting into details about, uh, about this analysis because it would take many thoughts, but what we did is we created collocation networks for each country for uh, every month during the pandemic. And we, we were looking at, so we were qualitatively um, interpreting the results, uh, in, um, keeping in mind the, the different stages of the pandemic that the different countries were, were going through at the time. So basically it was going into lockdown, staying in lockdown, and then going out of lockdown um, in, the different, uh, in the different countries. And more, more of these graphs are in the blog post, so if you're interested, you're welcome to take a look. The, in terms of tracking the, the developments of the COVID-related discussions in the parliaments, uh, compared to the developments of the actual pandemic. We created a series of timeline plots where in this case, each bar represents one week and uh, relative frequencies of four main um, keywords that we chose. And these are COVID and coronavirus and epidemic and pandemic. Uh, COVID and coronavirus are the blue ones, epidemic and pandemic are the green ones. Um, and they are stacked, so the height of the bar indicates that, like, the total intensity of, of, of the use of these keywords during the, the week, the given week. And the orange line represents the number of new COVID cases identified during that week per million population. And this is just standardized to have the, the infections on the same uh, scale, more or less, as the word frequencies. And what we took from this Ah, and these two plots are for Italy and the United Kingdom. The two countries of the four that we analyzed where the pandemic started pretty early. So the first cases are on 
I think they were on January 30th. And what we took from this is that um, debates, the first mentions of these pandemic related words in the parliaments took time more or less at the same time as the first infections were, were identified in these countries. Then during the first wave of the pandemic in the spring, as a number of cases increased, the intensity of debates in the parliament increased as well. And then it leveled off and declined actually during the summer. And then there was the second wave of the pandemic in the fall, but this was not paralleled by a similar increase in the intensity of um, of the pandemic in the parliaments, at least based on the analysis of these um, four keywords. And the second thing that we, um, we uh, took from this is that uh, in different countries, and I will show the second countries in a moment, the words epidemic and pandemic were, were used somewhat interchangeably, but one word dominated in some countries and the other in others. So for example, in the UK, it was mostly pandemic, so the darker green, but in Italy, um, and members of parliament used the word epidemic throughout um, the well, pandemic. The two other countries that we were analyzing, Poland and Slovenia, these are the same plots. So again, the bars represent weeks. Here, the time span is shorter because of just the availability of uh, the coverage, uh, time coverage in the data. And here, these were the two countries where the first cases of coronavirus were identified late in early, in the first days of March. So the debates about the pandemic actually preceded the, the first cases, but that was already after first cases were identified in, in the UK and Italy. Um, and also the intensity of the debates increased as the first wave was developing and somewhat declined during the summer, but that's where our time series ends, so we can't say much about what happened in the fall. And the last thing that we did was to look at the, the differences in the mentions of, of the pandemic related keywords about member, uh, among members of parliament from the opposition and from the coalition uh, using the, the identifiers in the, in the parliament data. And um, we found quite mixed results. So for example, in Italy, it seems that the government MPs or the coalition MPs were using the keywords pandemic much more than, than MPs from the opposition. And here the um, um, more or less the, the same for epidemic, although with the exception of, of March 2020, and I should say that here the bars are monthly, uh, not weekly anymore. The complete opposite was in the case of Poland, where it seems that the opposition was talking about the pandemic much, much more uh, than uh, the coalition. So one, one idea to, was to extend this analysis to more countries and to try to understand whether there are any regularities, um, depending on which kind of part, what kind of parties are in the coalition and uh, in the government or in the opposition. So challenges and ideas for future research. Um, the, a more ex extending this analysis to more countries would be an idea identifying one thing that we wanted to do during the hackathon and we ended, we ended up not doing this was to identify some more specific COVID pandemic related measures to trace them over time. And here we, the difficulty was to find uh, comparable keywords across all the countries. And we also started analyzing named entities, but we ended up not pursuing this and more focusing on the, on the, um, on the, the core of the analysis that, that I presented. And I wanted to end with a plug for Ruben's work, who worked also independently from the hackathon uh, team's work on the role of experts during the pandemic in the different countries. And the last, the, the bottom link is some of the work I've been doing to put this, to convert this analysis to R, um, addressing Dalia's comment during the hackathon that it would be nice to automate this work to, and to extend it to our countries and with no, with no search engine and all the clicking, that's not so practical. So I'm working on putting this analysis to R and that's it for me. Thank you very much for listening.